like you're intruding upon my education. This is crazy, Charlie. That's crazy. Shut up. Whoa, what the hell is this? What are you doing, man? Well, I'm trying to learn Mandarin and listen to Beethoven at the same time. You see, I just realized that I have two ears. So it's a waste to only listen to one thing. Let me get this straight. You just realized that you have two ears? Yeah. Welcome back to Kirill Smashes Acting. I'm Kirill, actor, educator, cat enthusiast. Joining me today is my newest foster. This is Nebula. She just came into the house the other day, so she's still getting the lay of the land. I hope you all had a great holiday break. I know I spent it both working, traveling, seeing family, overall having a great time. I spent part of my holiday at this amazing place called Turpentine Creek, which I will list below. They're a large cat sanctuary and they rescue all kinds of animals to lions, tigers, bears, oh my. And they let you stay the night and staying the night actually is the way they raise most of their money. So I'll put that link in the description below and I hope that anybody who's in the area gets to enjoy that as much as I did. So now getting back to our acting. Recently we did a video about memorization and I got a bunch of emails asking me to go through the different apps that help you memorize. And since I've never really gone through them and I never really used it because I'm old, I wanted to give them a shot and to review for you guys what I thought was good and bad about each one. So now with my assistant awake and ready to go, let's dive into it. So for each of the reviews that we're going to go through, I used two different plays to try it out. Number one was The Shape of Things by Neil O'Butte. This is a play that I physically own a copy of, and I scanned it in using my phone to see how well the app would recognize the different lines and figure out which characters are saying them or which ones are stage direction. The second play I used is a play called Bad Jews by Joshua Harmon. Unlike The Shape of Things, I owned an electronic copy of Bad Jews, thinking that it would be easier for the programs to import them and recognize the text. The first app I used was called Script Rehearser. Here are some of the pros. The first great thing about it is importing plays was really easy. To import plays, you just hit this plus button, then hit import PDF, and then you go through your downloads to see which one you want to import. Once you chose it, I'm going to choose Bad Jews, it was pretty easy to just hit play, and it would go for you. Editing the script was a piece of cake, and honestly, I found the app pretty easy to use. This app was free, and I would highly recommend it. Since I was new to the app, it gave me a lot of really great hints on how to use the app in a more functional way. Once you figure out which character you are, you select that in the character screen, and it knows not to read your lines unless you want it to. You're able to adjust the voice pitch, the voice speed, so you have a lot of control over how each character sounds. The app gives you a lot of options as to how you want to set up your rehearsals. It could beep on your lines. You can turn on and off the display of your lines. You can turn on and off the stage directions. Honestly, once you get into it, it makes the rehearsal process a lot easier. One of the best things about these apps for me is that it highlighted a weakness I have. I know I sometimes skip the stage directions when I'm memorizing, and that could hurt me in rehearsal because even though I know the words that are coming, I'm not always in tune with the action until I get into rehearsal, so I might miss a thing or two. While I was working with this app, I had it read the stage directions to me, and that actually made me much more aware of the scene as it was happening and made it a part of my memorization instead of something that I layered on later on. Yes, baby. One of the things I found challenging at first but got used to was breaking up a long script into scenes. Once you're used to the app, you can start the scene anywhere you want and stop the scene anywhere you want so that when you're working on it, you can work on smaller sections of the script. So while not perfect, Script Rehearser is a great way to start your adventure through electronic memorization. It's easy to use, free, and that's a big one, and most importantly, you can import scripts really easy. The next app we're going to talk about is called Run Lines. Both Run Lines and Script Rehearser were very easy to import the PDF. It broke down each character one by one. Script Rehearser did a great job with the shape of things. Even though it was a book that I scanned, it was able to pick up the different lines and the different characters. Run Lines was really good with Bad Jews. So now while it didn't really work with the shape of things because I scanned it in, Run Lines worked great with Bad Jews. The biggest problem with both of these is that 
the automatic reading is kind of off. It doesn't really feel the same as if you were going to record it yourself. Now, of course, if you're working on something short, it's very easy to record every line yourself. But if you're working on a full length play, it starts becoming a little bit daunting. While Run Lines was also free and mostly easy to use, Run Lines was also really good at editing the script. So if you needed to change certain things about it, it was very easy in the app to do so. You could select which ones you wanted to read and which ones you wanted it to skip. While both Run Lines and Script Rehearser are free, I would actually recommend Script Rehearser just because of how well it imported both Bad Jews and The Shape of Things. The reality is you're not always going to have a perfect electronic file of every script you're going to do, so you want an app that's able to take a physical script that you have and be able to work with that as well. And for that reason, Script Rehearser is definitely going to have to be above run lines. The next one we're going to be talking about is Line Learner. Line Learner was very popular amongst the people I asked, but I did not have as great an experience with it as other people did. I want to give you guys the cons before I tell you the many pros of Line Learner. The biggest con from Line Learner is that you cannot import a PDF and have it just read to you. Line Learner only reads to you what you recorded into it. What makes it a great tool is that you have to be very engaged with the script you're learning. What makes it more challenging is that if you're on the run or if you're trying to do something quickly, there are a lot of steps you have to follow before it really gets set up for you. This is especially true if you're doing a full length production. If you're doing a film or a long play, the more scenes you have, the more work you have to put in just to get Line Learner set up. Now that being said, once you do get it set up, it really is a great tool. Once you have it set up and you've broken it down into scenes, there are tons of options on how to use Line Learner. I was actually in an email correspondence with the support staff of Line Learner trying to figure out how to import PDFs. And that's how I discovered that you have to do all the work on your own. The good thing about this is that once you've done all the work, since you were engaged with all the lines, you get a much better sense of what's happening in the world around you as you're memorizing. Once you do have everything recorded, it can change the pitch and the voice of each character to help give you a much better and a much more human version of what the other actors you're going to be working with might sound like. And if that sounds like something that you could put the work into, you will get amazing results with this app. The last one we're going to cover is called Line Learn. Line Learn, like Script Rehearser, also does a really good job of importing scripts that you both had physically and then scanned, as well as scripts that were typed out properly. That is something to me that has been huge in this review. Once you import your script, you convert it to the script file. Once you have the script imported, you can really control how quickly, slowly, how much pause time you have in between each line. So it really does give you a lot of control. Not as easy to use as script rehearser, which for me is still the champion. You can go cue to cue. You could change the cue length. It really does give you a ton of control. You could turn off stage directions. You could change the speed that you're going. And if you want, you can mark a pause in between any line you want. And when you're ready, you can record each line on your own if that's what you're going, much like Line Learner. I actually found this app pretty useful. Not as intuitive as Script Rehearser, but once I got into it, it did give me a lot more control. So in the end, here's how I'd rate it. Script Rehearser number one, Line Learn number two, and Run Lines number three, but it's by a hair and it's by preference. If you want the easy import and go method, go with script rehearser and then maybe line learn. If you want that in-depth kind of work that line learner offers you, that's the one where you have to record everything. If that's the kind of personality you are, then that's the one that's going to give you by far the best results. So it really is a matter of what you're trying to do. For the quick one scene auditions, I found line learner, the one where you record things to be the most efficient because I got to go in depth with it. And for the longer scripts, like the full length plays, I enjoyed script rehearser the most. If you enjoyed that video, hit the like button, subscribe if you wanna see more, feel free to share, and let me know in the comments what apps you use and would recommend to others. Thanks as always, and we'll see you in the next video. Say goodbye, Nebula. Goodbye, Nebula. I know I'm corny.